Quick warning, this video will be full of spoilers for Raised by Wolves episodes 1 through 7. If you've been watching Raised by Wolves, then you know something strange is happening on Kepler 22b. Marcus hears voices, has visions, and now believes he is the subject of a Mithraic prophecy. Tali, a dead girl, haunts mother, father, and Campion, and plays hide and seek with Vita. Also, we may have witnessed some divine intervention. So, what the heck is going on? Who or what resides on Kepler 22b? And what hidden force has been guiding this story from the beginning? Let's jump into it, but first, quick reminder, if you like Raised by Wolves and enjoy theorizing about it as much as I do, please go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon for more videos like this one. By this point, it's safe to assume there is some intelligent force on the planet. Whatever its nature, we know someone or something is communicating with our characters. Also, it seems likely it has existed on Kepler 22b since before our characters landed there. We get our first inkling of this in Episode 4, when the Mithraic discover this structure, which seems to be the product of intelligent design. Episode 6 gave us another clue when this force, posing as Campion, says, I've been alone for so long. Nothing. Actually, this scene with fake Campion is ripe with clues about the Force's true nature. Before we dive into that, let's quickly recap why we can be confident he is a mouthpiece for the intelligence. Mother finally learns her true origins in Episode 5 when she enters the Sim for a second time. However, she doesn't just decide to enter the Sim on her own, she is lured there by the vision of Tali. Following this vision, Mother finds one of Tali's patented stick dolls on the capsule, then hears her voice. The intelligence conjured the image of Tali to lure Mother in, then it plucked the memories of Campion from Mother's archives so she would fall in love all over again. Why would the unknown force want Mother to remember Campion? Well, it wants to guide or manipulate Mother to its own ends. If she falls in love with Campion and the intelligence can speak as Campion, its words suddenly hold a lot more weight for Mother. When they meet again in Episode 6, Mother listens closely to what the intelligence has to say, all because it wears Campion's face. An alternative explanation for simulation Campion is that he is programming left behind by the real Campion, an artificially intelligent version of him that can continue communication with Mother after his biological self presumably dies on Earth. This seems unlikely because of how cynical the new Campion is versus the one we saw on Earth. This is the reason for all my work. This is the reason why I created you. This and you are the future of humanity. No matter how hard you work to keep them safe, Mother, in the end, they will always destroy themselves over and over and over again. They have no future. So, Sim Campion should give us a good idea of what the intelligence is and what it wants. First, when Mother enters the Sim, the computer informs her that another user has accessed it. When she asks if the other user is an android, the computer replies, unknown. Our first clue that Mother encounters a strange force in the Sim. Then, when Mother speaks to Sim Campion, she says, you are human, and he responds, Yes, but I'm many things implying he is powerful and can manifest in different ways, as a human, a ghost, a voice, or pure force. Now, let's pay close attention to what he says. You lured me here. Yes. I missed you. I've been alone for so long. Nothing. He confirms Tally and her picture were used to lure Mother into the Sim. Also, he says, I've been alone for so long, Mother. The intelligence has been alone on this planet for a long time, waiting for someone to join him. Specifically, someone like Mother. Someone more advanced than humans that can exist on a similar plane as himself. You are light. They are only shadows. This is our first indication that the intelligence views humans as inferior beings. They have no future. Their antiques chain to time. Their lives are only dying. The intelligence sees no future for humanity. Further, I believe this line hints at its true nature. It says, they are antiques chained to time. One way to interpret this line is, humans are biological, which implies that this intelligent force is not. So, what is it? 
This question reminds me of a theory Arthur C. Clarke explored in 2001 A Space Odyssey. In it, he posited that humanity will eventually transcend biology by transferring consciousness into robotic bodies. Even further down the line, we would leave physical bodies behind entirely, taking on the form of pure force or energy. I don't know that Raised by Wolves is subscribing to the same theory, but I think it's using a similar one. The intelligence speaks of Mother as a superior being to humans, and it speaks as though it wants to unchain her from them, so she can join it on a higher plane of existence. My theory is that the intelligence is the end result of a long evolutionary chain. Perhaps another intelligent civilization in the galaxy created androids and reached the singularity, the point at which technological growth becomes rapid, uncontrollable, and irreversible. Eventually, this would lead to a form of artificial life so advanced it would seem godlike to us. It would have the ability to whisper in our ear or deliver visions. And further, it would view someone like Mother as much further along on the evolutionary chain than biological humans. I believe Mother is speaking to a being similar to herself, but much more advanced. Also, the being doesn't necessarily have to have come from another civilization. It's also possible it spun off from humanity at some point. Perhaps androids left Earth in the past and, unencumbered on Kepler-22b, they managed to evolve and improve themselves rapidly. Gil here just wanted to quickly interrupt to remind you that if you're enjoying this video, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. Anytime someone likes or subscribes, it's a big help to the channel, and on a personal level, it gets me super excited and super motivated to do the next video. So if you like or subscribe, you are an amazing human being. With that, back to the video. So we have some idea about its nature, but what does the intelligence want? For one, we know it wants Mother to live. But what is its ultimate goal? Based on the loneliness Campion expresses, and what he and Mother do next, I think it wants to live among its own kind. The show's primary theme is the creation and survival of society. Mother wants to create an atheistic society, the Mithraic want a religious one, and the intelligence wants a peaceful one comprised of advanced, transcendent beings. Mother would be that future's first resident besides the intelligence itself. So it attempts to liberate her from humanity's grasp. It first does this by helping to destroy humanity. Recall in episode 1 how Mother managed to take down the Ark. Marcus tried to escape in his lander, but that didn't work, giving Mother a chance to steal it and fly to the Ark. Initially, I assumed Mother somehow prevented Marcus from taking off. However, I now think it was the intelligence at work. We haven't seen that Mother has the ability to remotely control or interfere with electronics, but we have seen evidence that the intelligence can. For example, in Episode 6, when Mother is out of commission, the Mithraic explosives somehow fail and their communications go down. I believe this is the work of the intelligence, as was the lander's failure to launch. So, the intelligence protects Mother and helps along humanity's destruction. That gets it part of the way there, but isn't enough. It also needs to free Mother from her desire to protect any part of humanity, including her children. Right now, her biggest tie to humanity is Child Campion. In Episode 7, the unknown force appears to Campion multiple times as Tully, and tries convincing him to take his own life. It knows that for Mother to be truly free, Campion has to be out of the picture, and ideally, Campion would do it himself, so Mother would never suspect foul play by the intelligence. I will caveat here that there is a line in Episode 7 when the intelligence, as Tully, says... To me, this sounds like Tolly saying, kill yourself, Campion. But on second viewing, I watched with subtitles, and they say, kill your father, Campion. However, no matter how many times I listen to this, it sounds to me like she's saying, kill yourself. Which to me, feels more in keeping with the rest of Tolly's lines this episode. She implies that after this task, Campion can join her and the other children, who are all dead which to me says Campion needs to die as well in order to join them. Additionally, she later shows Campion this noose. So I suspect the subtitles are incorrect here, but we'll be happy to stand corrected if I'm wrong later on. What about the other humans it speaks to? If it wants humanity out of the picture, why does it make this promise to Marcus? Let her live, and you will be king of this world. 
In addition, it seems to be delivering on the Mithraic prophecy that a city of peace will be built. He told us he saw the city of Mithras in his dreams. So we asked him to show us. And show us he did. The voice promises Marcus he'll be a king and shows Paul where they'll live. By the end of episode 7, we can see Marcus's beliefs are solidified and he accepts his role as part of the Mithraic prophecy. The prophecy about the orphan boy and the empty land is not Paul. It's not the atheist kid. It's me. The intelligence has Marcus and Paul on its side, but something stands in the way. Paul's mother and Marcus's wife, Sue, is a staunch non-believer. She wants to leave everything behind and live just the three of them in the tropical zone. So I think the intelligence will ultimately want Sue out of the picture. That's why it shows Marcus this vision, him killing Sue with mother's scalpel. In episode seven, as Sue tends to his wounds, Marcus hallucinates the scalpel in his hands then drops it and sees it replaced with the knife he carries. The vision of the scalpel reminds him of what the intelligence wants. So the intelligence has Marcus and Paul convinced that they're involved in a prophecy to build the city of Mithras. Why? This would seem at odds with the idea that humanity is inferior and has no role in the future. My theory is that they are being misled. The being may need some help in building its future, so it manipulates these humans to do its bidding. Although we've seen it interact with the physical world, it does seem to have significant limitations. For example, of all the children, it only imitates Tali, maybe because she fell in the pit and that somehow gives it access to her image. Further, in order to have a fruitful conversation with Mother, it had to lure her into the simulation where it has more control over its form. Ultimately, I think the intelligence wants them to begin construction on the city of Mithras. Perhaps part of that will involve the creation of more androids and ultimately bodies or vessels which the intelligence can occupy. Once it has full access to the physical world and it no longer requires the help of human hands, I think Paul, Marcus, and the other Mithraic will be left behind or perhaps killed. I mentioned the tropical zone earlier and it's worth touching on here. In episode one, we learn of its existence and learn why the Park didn't land there. There's a tropical zone near the equator. There's a considerable electromagnetic field that's preventing us from landing our arc there. When we first heard this, it was easy to assume the electromagnetic field is a natural phenomenon. However, with the added context of an intelligence that can manipulate electronics, it seems more likely that it's intentional. It likely created the field, turning the tropical zone into a promised land, which our characters can reach eventually but only after they've gone through this journey, manipulated by an unseen force. By the time we reach the promised land, all the pieces will be in place, so that Mother, Marcus, Paul, and the Mithraic will be on the side of this force, ready to do its bidding. One last question I'll touch on is, could this intelligence actually be soul? It certainly seems to be delivering on the Mithraic prophecy. However, this could be opportunistic. Perhaps it saw the Mithraic belief system as something to be manipulated. It can pretend to be soul, turning Marcus into a prophet, so it can manipulate the Mithraic to its own ends. However, another possibility is that the intelligence has been around longer than we realize. Birthed from another civilization, perhaps it created the Mithraic or even humanity itself. Maybe the creatures on Kepler 22b represent an early attempt at the creation of life. Although their bodies appear almost lizard-like, their faces do bear some resemblance to humans. Further, the children described the creatures as tasting like pork. It could be coincidence, but Polynesian cannibals have said that humans have a pork-like taste. Anyway, that's a train of thought I probably shouldn't take too much further, so I think this is a good place to wrap up. This video is of course a lot of theorizing and speculation, but I think there's good evidence to say there's something here. But definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think of these theories? Do you have any alternate takes? Let me know and we'll keep the conversation going. Also, we only have three episodes to go this season, so make sure you're subscribed to keep up with our coverage as things wrap up. So if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. Thanks for watching and see you on the next One Take.